You might recall a few videos back I showed how you can use AI to automatically edit some of your exterior photos, but did you know that there's also a feature in Photoshop to do something for interior real estate photos? In this episode, I'm going to show you what that feature is, but I'm going to do it in two different examples because I want to first show some of the basics of how this can be applied, but then how some of its shortcomings can be overcome to really advance it to the next level to automate some of your interior real estate photo editing. So in Photoshop, we're going to work on this particular image to do some automated AI. And we're also going to be using this image here that's a little bit more complex when using some automated AI. Covering both will show us the full scope of using this tool and its shortcomings. Now, if you remember though, when we were talking about exterior photos, it really worked well in that new feature that's in Lightroom Classic and Adobe Camera Raw, which is when we go over to our masking and we can select then landscape landscape masking. When we select landscape masking in Adobe Camera Raw or in Lightroom Classic, then it automatically detects the various features that we can edit and it creates a new mask for each one. And in this case, we can see that it detected the sky, it detected the architecture, vegetation, the artificial ground, which is really the pavement, and then the natural ground also. So for instance, we could take the artificial ground, we could create a mask from that, and then we could lower its exposure because it was so bright. And it's working then just with that particular mask. The same way too, if we did something with the architecture, we could also, since this was a backlit house, we could take that architecture and then we could increase its exposure. Now there's a little bit more to it and I do cover it in that other episode, but the problem is when we're taking a look at an interior photo, there just isn't any option to do that because that's really concentrating that other feature on landscape photography. Some of the other object selection too that we have in Photoshop has really concentrated on portrait photography. And that's why they have on the new uh, object selection tool they've had recently these things like select people and select people details. But there is a way to get all of these features, the ones that are objects within this particular image for an interior photo so that we can work with them with masks as well. And it's all automated by AI. Let's start from the bottom though. Let's take a look at what really took to get this. We can understand some of the things we might want to adjust. This right here is a deliverable image to the client that was then a finished image. It started out looking like this. This was just an ambient shot. Now, doing HDR with this would be extremely difficult. It might be a little bit easier on the next one we show. But with this one, that's why I did it with that typical flambient blending technique. If we start at the bottom, you can see there's me doing some flash. I do a two-sided composite here, a little bit of a light and blending mode. You've probably seen me do this before, where then I'm going to add some ambient luminance, not ambient color ambient luminance in selective places than I do typical to the workflow. I would do some color corrections. And here I also then just pumped up a little bit of the island levels and then do the darken mode window pull with a little bit of repair. Now I've got that view through here. Didn't have to cut out any windows like you'd have to do with HDR. This is all done with flash. And then I just apply the post-processing preset to it. This happened to do it just in camera raw on a smart object. And then just a few little touches here because this was for a designer. And there is a lot that we can do compared to if this was for a real estate listing. But really the techniques here are exactly the same for everything that we'd want to do. But let's say though here we're at this point and we really want to pump up the floor or we need to change some of the things in here. We can't detect these features with any of that landscape masking that we had before, but we can with this new feature. And this is what you do. You go up to the top of your most active layer. This was just up here just to show you for reference that ambient layer. We could even delete it. But I'll just select this and what we want to do is stamp all these layers together. And you've probably seen me do this before where it's control alt shift E on windows or command option shift E on a Mac. And when you do that, then you'll get one stamped layer at the very top. It's just everything. You can turn that on and off and it's just everything. This is a temporary layer. We're going to eventually throw this away, but we need this to use the feature which if now you right click on that layer, you can go up here to mask all 
objects. That's also available if you were to go up to the layer menu and under the layer menu, you would then see mask all objects. When you click this, then AI goes out and detects all the objects that are in this particular image and it will create a group with a mask for each one, similar to what Lightroom Classic was doing for the landscape masking. When this is done, you'll see then that we've got a whole bunch of groups over here. Let me expand this just a little bit so we can see it just a little bit better. You can see each one of these was created for these objects. To see what was there, what I can do is on a mask, I can press Alt click if I'm on Windows, Option click if you're on a Mac, and you can see what was applied. So here I can see that, look, it picked out that chair, it picked out this chair here, it picked out that range hood. This is good, but the problem is, you'll notice here that it was detecting objects, not structure. And when we're on the inside, yes, we do want to work with objects a lot, but most often it's the structure. Things like the walls, things like the islands, the cabinets, the backsplash. And if we go through all these different masks, you can see that it's detecting objects. Great, I can work with all these various lamps, that's good, but I don't have anything that goes up and tells me this is what my island is. It got into such detail that it's detecting even the outlets over here that are on the walls, but it doesn't give me the big structure. Still, we're gonna utilize this so that we can use structure when we go over to this example because this has a lot of structure in it, so we're really gonna use this to our advantage there. But here, in this case, what I can do is, let's say that I wanted to make an adjustment on the floor here to really richen up that hardwood. So in the most basic case, what I could do is select then the layer group that is mask for the floors. This is the bottom one. If you may recall, if I do an alt click on here, there's that floor. So all I need to do is with this group selected under a normal case, once again, we're getting to get into some of the more advanced cases, especially with structure in the next one. But here in a basic case, what I would do is go down here and you could select this little icon, which is then to create an adjustment layer. And here I'll create a levels layer. Now what it's done is that levels layer is now masked automatically. It was masked automatically when we did that mask all objects. And now I could change some of the levels to really just pump that up. So just a little bit of an adjustment there. I could take it extreme. You can see that it's only affecting that area of the floor because that's what was automatically detected. So here I've pumped up the levels on the floor. If we turn that group on and off, we can see that difference. It richened up that hardwood floor. You need to richen it up more. Well, you just go back here and then change your adjustments on that levels layer. And it's all controlled then and masked by this group. But once again, we don't have anything that's detecting our island. We don't have anything that's detecting our walls. So that's where we have to get into the next example. And that's with this finished image. Now, once again, if we take a look at how this started, this was just the ambient image. And so that's why I applied that flambient technique with also darkened mode window poles, just like I showed in the last example. And by the way, if you're not familiar with that technique of what I've shown so far of doing the flambient technique and some of the color corrections, then I would invite you to take a look at my online courses for doing real estate photography. As you may know, I've got courses that cover professional interior photography, expert editing, exterior photography, videography, business and marketing for real estate, and I've also written best-selling books on real estate photography as well, and I have links to all that down in the description for this video. Getting back to here though, once again, we can take a look at some of the basics that were done here and where the problems came up that I needed to use this special automated AI object detection. If we start at the very bottom, here is a basic flash shot and then my typical two-sided composite. And by the way, during this whole time, an umbrella is on a stand near the camera because we've got a very high ceiling in this room. Anyways, another one of those techniques I show in the Pro Interiors course, as well as doing light and blending mode pops to fill that in, then we just add ambient light. Once again though, this is luminance, it isn't the color. 
But now we're into a problem. If we go in here, if we zoom in, we can see the problem is showing up, which can be typical sometimes when using flash because you'll get these shadows that were cast and when the ambient light hit it, it was devoid of color, it was achromatic. So when we do add luminance into it, then we get this. So that's a very simple color correction that you can do. And we're gonna show how to do it here. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna be able to do it without touching the chairs by doing this, once again, automatic object selection. Now, going real quick on what we did for the rest of the image here, you can see that this was just your typical darkened mode window pulls, so that we get these views to the outside, some simple color correction techniques, and just a little bit of finessing with some object removal. But then, look at this. When we get to the island, it had some nice island lights that were very hard to detect because so much natural light was coming in, so I modified that. And I did this in a very similar manner that I'm gonna show also when we do this color correction technique. And that's once again gonna be using that automated AI. And then just a little bit of overall brightness, and then this was the finished image delivered to the client. So let's back up here though, and let's go back down here to where we got to the point where we've got this color problem here. And this is now where we can use the object selection to our advantage. Now, instead of doing this all over again, I did save all of these up here in a group. So this was all of the objects that were detected and selected. So you can see here, this for instance is the floor, this right here is that picture, and then most importantly, we've got the stool here, that stool, that stool, and that stool. These are gonna be critical when we get to this edit. So the first thing I would do to correct these colors here is I would make a color correction layer. And that's what this is here, that was a color fill layer, just like I show in the expert editing course I've shown throughout my books. We'll just duplicate this so we can just reuse it. I'll just do Control J to duplicate it, get it out of the group so that's over top of everything, and then we'll just hide this group here. We'll just collapse that so it's not interfering, and we'll get rid of this layer mask. So you can see that we can use this to fill in any color that we might want, but we don't want it everywhere. So we wanna mask it off, and we'll just go layer, mask, and then hide all. So we're just hiding that layer mask. The next thing is what I would do to utilize this new AI tool is to first get the area in general that we want to work with. So what I'll do is draw here just a quick polygon around all of this wood. That way I've got that isolated. I don't need an object selection tool to do that for me. And then I would press Alt-Delete on the mask and that fills it in, but of course it's now selected all these chairs. I'm gonna do Control D to deselect that. Now the next thing is I need to delete all of this out of here and I can do that from these earlier objects that were detected. So what I'm gonna do here is go here, find my first chair, that's that one there, and these other four are the other chairs. What I can do is now on this mask, do Control Click and it selects that part of the mask, that chair. If I wanna to add to it, I do shift control click, and of course that would be shift command click if you're on a Mac, and I keep doing that on the other stools. So now that I've got our, all four of those stools selected, automatically, once again, these masks were made by AI, I can go down to my color fill layer here and just press the delete key. Okay, so that worked really well. Then I can take, for instance, my object selection tool here with object selection detect, uh, selected, sorry, and then lasso selected and sample all layers and also make sure that up here you don't have the object finder on. That just wastes a lot of resources. But on here, I'm just gonna draw around that outlet and it detected it and I'll draw around this outlet here and it detected that and now I'll press delete and delete that. But now I've got a lot of color everywhere and I really don't want that because that was just one color of the wood. I just want it in places I need to edit. So what you do in this case is you create another layer mask. And to do that, you would right click on this layer and you would say new group from layers and name it whatever you'd like. And then add a layer mask. In this case, I'll go up to layer and then layer mask, and then I'll say hide all. Now I can decide where I wanna paint in. 
And if I were to use, let's say, we'll use a brush of 100% flow here, up here, just to show what I'm talking about. If I were to brush out here, nothing's going to happen because I'm constrained down here by that mask. So we'll just undo that. And what I can do then is I can take the, my brush now and on the group mask, I can brush in where I'd like the color corrections to be. So now I've got control of having these two masks, deciding where I want it to have the color applied, and I'm not then worried about hitting the chairs because that's all been constrained. I'm not worried about hitting the island or any of these other areas, for instance, like the outlets. I can just keep painting on here as much as I want. In fact, if I were just to do a shift click on the mask, then I can see what would be applied. And that really is not much different, but all it's doing is just applying where we had this applied. So that's then how I would do that. So just keep painting on the group mask now that everything else has been selected. So now I can zoom back out. So you can see this helps quite a bit. If I turn this group off, you can see we needed those color corrections. If I turn this group on, then of course that applies the color corrections, but only in those areas. And like we did before too, we can still take this further by saying, you know what? After we had our finished image, let's just go ahead and activate that layer, which is this one right here. I can say, I wanna do something more with that concrete floor. Well, all I need to do is select the concrete floor from my earlier object selection. I can do control click and there's my concrete floor. I can then go above this layer and let's say we'll do a new layer. Maybe this time we'll do a curves layer. So I'll do layer, new adjustment layer and a curves layer. And what I can do is that curves layer now is made with that object selection that was done earlier. So I didn't have to place it under that group. I can create my own layers based off what was selected before. Now I can take the curves adjustment and decide how I want to adjust it. Maybe just to richen up those floors a little bit and add just a little bit more contrast to them. So once again, that though is masked to the floors or what it thought was the floors. You want to see what was selected? Then you can do Alt Shift and you can see what's selected here. You can see it overlapped a little bit on there. So in this case, I can even do it with the mask selected like this. I can take an eraser tool and then erase out of there as I see fit. So I can do that. And then if we do Alt click on that mask again, we can see what the adjustments are. So anyways, by utilizing this mask all objects, we can not only just place adjustment layers within a group, like we did in the earlier example where we added that levels layer for the floor, but we can also add in various things that are masked based off the object detection, just like we did for this color fill layer. And then we can still take it further and say, we don't want to use those groups, but we want to use the masks from those groups to make our own adjustment layers on top of that. Now with Adobe, it, they're really targeting their biggest audiences, which are going to be landscape photographers and portrait photographers. You know, because even weddings fall under portraits, they have a lot of people. But when it comes to architecture and design and real estate photography overall, it's just not as big of an audience for Adobe. But I do hope that one day they will find it to be of enough interest to add structure detection in here so that we can detect things like our cabinets, like our island, like these things over here. But until then, at least this is an option you can use to have AI automatically detect the objects within an image, and then you can utilize that to your advantage when editing your interior real estate photos.